Over the past couple of weeks, there have been a lot of big contract extensions signed, so I figured now would be the perfect time to play a game called NHL Overpaid or Underpaid. I've only ever done one of these on the channel once, and that was like two or three years ago, so this concept is probably going to be new to like 90% of you, but it's very simple. Basically, I asked you guys on the community tab the other day to name a player, and I'm going to say if I think that player is overpaid or underpaid based on their current contract. And of course, feel free to play along down below in the comments. I'm always interested to hear what you guys have to say, but the first comment we have comes from Camden the Goat who says Adam Pellick is making 5.75 million AAV. He's such an underrated defenseman who doesn't get talked about as much as he should. I really enjoy your videos and keep up the great work. Thank you for the kind words. I'm going to go ahead and say 5.75 million for Adam Pellick. I think he is slightly underpaid. That is a fantastic contract for one of the absolute best defensive defensemen in the entire NHL. And you're right, Adam Pellick doesn't get talked about as much as, you know, the Kale McCars and the Roman Yossis of the world because he doesn't really put up a ton of points. He's not useless offensively by any means. He can still move the puck put up like 25 plus points in a season, but obviously what makes him so valuable and makes him so important to the New York Islanders is how good he is defensively. Adam Pellick is without a doubt a top four defenseman on any team in the league, so again, I'm going to say he is slightly underpaid. The next comment we have comes from Senator Sal who says, I'm not sure I've heard your reaction slash opinion of Marc-Andre Fleury's new contract. Is he underpaid for a star goalie? And thank you for the kind words. So for those of you who don't know, Marc-Andre Fleury did sign a two year, $7 million deal with the Wild, but that was a while ago. I'm going to say a $3.5 million AAV for Marc-Andre Fleury, even still at this point in his career, I think that is an underpayment. Let's not forget that Marc-Andre Fleury is literally only one season removed from winning the Vezina Trophy as the league's best goaltender in his final year in Vegas. Now, obviously this past season, his numbers dropped quite a bit, but I think a lot of that can be attributed to the fact that he played the first half of the season with the Chicago Blackhawks, who were not a good team, but then after being dealt to the Wild at the trade deadline, he finished the season with a 9-2 record as a member of the Minnesota Wild. Wild had a 9-10 save percentage. Marc-Andre Fleury is 100% still capable of playing at a high level. Moving on now to the next comment, this one comes from Vinecton who says, Andrew Kopp overpaid or underpaid, got a 5-year, $5 million deal with Detroit. Personally, I think it's a bit too much since it seems like he got the money for the run he had with New York. Would love to hear your thoughts on this since you're a Red Wings fan and thank you for the support. I'm definitely going to say overpaid, but not by much. I would say between like 4.5 and 4.8 million would be a fair AAV for somebody like Andrew Cobb. Sure, he just had a career high 21 goal, you know, 50 plus point season, but I don't really expect him to score at that pace again with the Red Wings. But Andrew Cobb is a guy who impacts the game a lot aside from just putting up points. He's a winning player. He makes winning plays, real good on the penalty kill, decent two way game as well, and also plays a prime position at center, which was a big position of need for the Red Wings coming into this offseason. They needed to fill that number two center role. They did that with Andrew Cobb. So, again, definitely going to say slightly overpaid paid, but that's kind of how unrestricted free agency works. If you don't slightly overpay for a player, sometimes in a lot of cases heavily overpay for a player, you're not even going to get that player. You're going to lose out to another team. The next comment we have comes from Pod Golzin, who says JT Miller overpaid, underpaid, or fairly paid. And also I appreciate the support. So JT Miller is actually still under contract through this upcoming season at a cap it of just 5.25 million. Obviously we can all agree that is a massive underpayment, but I'm guessing you mean the new contract contract that he signed, 7 years, $56 million, and $8 million AAV. I'm going to go ahead and say that's actually pretty fair value for JT Miller, $8 million a season. He has been an absolute beast ever since becoming a member of the Vancouver Canucks, just had a career high 99 points in 80 games. He's kind of like the heart and soul of that team, it feels like. Even if JT Miller's totals come down a little bit this upcoming season, which I kind of expect them to, I don't really think he's going to be a guy that's pushing 100 points every season, but even if he's still like a point of game player, like between 80 and 85 points, I still think 8 million a season is fair value for him. Any of the criticism that I see in this contract extension get, it was more so based around the term, not really the AAV. I think a lot of people can agree with me that 8 million is pretty fair for JT Miller at this point in his career. It's just, you know, he's already 29 years old and this deal doesn't kick in until the 2023-24 season. So maybe years 5, 6, and 7 of this deal don't look so great, but that's obviously quite a ways down the road. And if you're the Vancouver Canucks, if you wanted to have any 
hope of really competing and being a playoff contender year in and year out, you had to get JT Miller signed. The next comment we have comes from Alexis who says Tim Stutzel, 8 year, $8.35 million per year contract extension. I think it's a little bit of an overpay for now, but it can turn out to be an excellent move by Ottawa if Stutzel can turn into a 90 point guy. Yeah, I mean, I have the same thoughts on this contract extension as pretty much everybody else does. Obviously, $8.35 million for Tim Stutzel right now for the player that he is and what he's done is an overpayment. But this isn't supposed to be one of those contracts where you're paying the player for what they have done. This is one of those extensions where you're paying him for what you hope he's going to do and what you hope he's going to become. Stutzel is already a very dynamic offensive player. I think he was like point a game in the final 30 games of the season for the Senators. He does still have to iron out a lot of things when it comes to his overall game. But this is definitely the kind of player who has all the tools and all the potential in the world to be like a 90 plus point guy like you said and if that happens then obviously this is very fair value moving along now next up darcy camper like grubauer camper is getting paid because of the elite defense in front of him would love to hear your take on it i actually kind of disagree with you on that point and first before i get into it the contract that camper signed with the washington capitals this offseason has an aav of 5.25 million which i actually think is very fair for darcy camper and may actually be a slight underpay darcy camper has been one of the better goaltenders in the league for a while had great regular season stats with the avalanche this past season and obviously it helped that he was playing on such a stacked team but you look at his goals saved above expected which isolates a goaltender's individual performance it was fantastic and not to mention Darcy Kemper has had seasons in which he looked elite when he was playing on the Arizona Coyotes who obviously didn't have you know elite defensemen and a great team playing in front of him I actually feel like at this point in his career Darcy Kemper has kind of became underrated by a lot of people so again I'm gonna say 5.25 million for Darcy Kemper is either fair value or a slight underpay. Next up from Wes McCauley, Marner 11.6 mil, great player, but is he worth the money? So Marner actually doesn't make 11.6 mil, his cap it is about 10.9 million, and maybe you can say that's an overpayment by a couple hundred thousand, but I do believe strongly that Mitch Marner is a 10 million dollar caliber player. He's one of the best players in the league. He's been well over a point a game for the past four seasons. This past season, he had a career high 97 points in just 72 games, easily would have broken 100 had he played in all 82. Sure, he's had some disappointing playoff performances, but this is still a young player, and I would say Marner looked really good, really comfortable, and actually performed pretty well in the first round against Tampa Bay in the most recent postseason. So I'm going to say Marner's current contract is pretty fair value for the caliber of player that he is. Again, maybe you can say it's an overpay by a couple hundred thousand. Next up, this comment comes from Matthew, who says, Jesper Bratt's new contract, 5.45 for a point per game player, seems like a bargain seeing some of the 7 to $8 million contracts being handed out. 5.45 for Jesper Bratt is definitely a big underpay. He was fantastic this past season. Like you said, basically a point of game player. It's crazy to think that he's still only 24. Definitely one of the bigger draft steals in recent memory. For those of you who don't know, Jesper Bratt was actually a sixth round pick back in 2016. But when it comes to the contract that he signed this offseason one year, 5.45 million, that is Jesper Bratt basically betting on himself, trying to prove to the New Jersey Devils that this past season was not a fluke. That kind of production is sustainable. If he has another year, like the one that he just had, or maybe even better, he's going to get a massive payday, a massive contract, probably in the range of like 8, 8.5 million AAV. Next up, this comes from Max. Apparently, it's one of the worst contracts in the league, Nick Suzuki at 7.875 mil. I really like this concept. You should do it more. Hey, if you guys want it more, leave a like on the video. I'll definitely do another one of these in the near future. I'm pretty sure I know what you're referring to when saying it's apparently it's one of the worst contracts in the league. I think I've seen that uh, athletic post where, you know, based on their models they went over the worst contracts in the league and the Suzuki one was in there I will say that is definitely an overpay for what Nick Suzuki is right now but it's similar to what I said about the Tim Stutzley contract that is a contract Montreal is hoping Nick Suzuki grows into and develops into and I definitely think eventually he will Suzuki is still only 23 years old if he can get up there to you know a 75 plus point guy and still have really impressive two-way impacts then that could actually look like a bargain for that kind of player so again that is an overpay for what Nick Suzuki is right now, but it's one of those deals where the team is hoping the player grows into it. And now for the final comment of the video, this one comes from Kyle Savard, who says, Jay Gottinger at $4 million AAV for three years is an amazing contract. I'm certainly going to go ahead and agree with you on that. I think it's an amazing contract, definitely an underpay for Jay Gottinger, even though it is a small sample size, what we've seen from him at the NHL level. Even still, I think it's very safe to assume he's going to greatly outperform this contract. His career regular season numbers haven't been groundbreaking, but they've still been really solid.
solid, especially for a 23-year-old goaltender. And then obviously he had that first round series against Calgary, which was one of the greatest individual playoff series by a goaltender in history. I feel like he was unbelievable. That series really didn't have any business being that close whatsoever, but game seven overtime, Jake Ottinger took Dallas all the way. They just couldn't get it done. This is a guy who I feel like is going to be, you know, a top 10, maybe even to get to top five eventually goaltender in the league for a very long time. So three years, $12 million for that big underpay. So that is going to do it for today's video. Like I said, if you want to see more overpaid or underpaid in the coming weeks, be sure to leave this video a like. Let me know down below in the comment section that you enjoyed. And of course, if this was your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll talk to you all soon.